Here's the automatic trains that's similar to the one we're using in the test car at the moment. It's got the spin on oil filter at the back. Its numbers, it's a TZ1A4. And the computer for it is an AZ. And it has the three connector plugs on it. One of the things you need to look at is this housing here, you can see it's only enough room for the clutch plates. It's a non-turbo four-cylinder style. The six-cylinder style or turbo styles are longer here, far longer, and that's because the shaft that they have has a true center differential inside them, and then the clutch plates as well, whereas this one only has the clutch plates. So that's something to look out for because we can't modify this basket the way we modify this basket. I'm not sure yet whether or not this shaft can be swapped over in the same, same way that the non-turbo one can because of this gear. I've removed the mounting bolt for the rear transmission speed sensor. This is the front transmission speed sensor and the computer looks at the differential of these two speeds to understand how much all-wheel drive is needed and how to engage more or less clutch packs for front and rear wheel slip. So I've taken all those bolts out around now and we'll separate the transmission cover. With the rear case taken off you can see the all-wheel drive transfer clutch basket. All of these parts can be discarded. Inside the case you see the parts that we have. You have a gear that drives another gear and what we'll be doing is replacing the gear on both of these shafts with our sprocket and chain mechanism. As you can see from the standard setup when the input shaft turns one way the pinion shaft turns the opposite way. Replacing these gears with sprockets and chains will mean that they will both turn in the same direction. This mechanism here is the all-wheel drive transfer duty solenoid that puts pressure through this section into the all-wheel drive clutch. And that gets removed and replaced with a blanked off section. This is your parking pool mechanism and this is the park section which locks everything into gear and as you take this out of gear it goes to the normal position and allows all the gears to spin. The next stage is to remove these two drive gears which are going to get replaced with sprockets and chain. So we've made sure that we've unstaked the pinion nut here. We've got the transmission locked in park which means the gears can't move and we put a large 35mm socket on the pinion with a rattle gun under. Now in order to get enough room to get a bearing puller onto here we're going to remove this particular shaft and gear assembly so we're going to put it in neutral and put two screwdrivers behind here and pull this shaft and gear off. So now we have the transmission back in neutral which releases the parking pull and we can simply get a screwdriver behind the shaft and pull this shaft out and away. Being careful not to lose any components so you can see that there is bearings here and thrust bearings here that you need to make sure you don't lose. Now reveals the parking pole and the other gear. We've got this uh, two leg pull out. we're going to have to grind the edges of this puller down here and here to make it slim enough to fit behind the gear on the Subaru Auto. We've ground down the hook on one side of the puller to wrap around behind the Subaru gear. So we managed to slip the arms in behind the gear so that we can pull the gear off. Now you can pull the lower gear off using the puller. You can see the gear that's been removed has the bearing circled onto the gear and shaft. For the components in the auto that we will replace, you see this drive gear spins this drive gear so they spin in opposite directions. We replace it with a sprocket and a driven sprocket and a chain that spins in the same direction. This essentially spins the pinion in reverse. So the driven gear has a circlip on it retaining this bearing. We want to transfer the bearing and the circlip over to our super sprocket. So what we'll do is use the circlip pliers to undo this, then a press to press this off and press it all back onto the sprocket. We've put some clamps around the bearing and with the circlip removed we can now just press the bearing off using the shock press. We separated the shaft from its gears and bearing in two sections. That's the bearing and that's the gear removed from the shaft. You can see that's one piece of gear and 
parking pools, we used a bearing separator to be able to do this, plus our press. The next step is to be able to assemble this sprocket onto the shaft, but you will see this all drive clutch pack is in the way. So we're going to have to remove this all drive clutch pack, but keep the remaining area where the thrust bearing goes. So we're going to have to cut in here and remove this so this can be assembled. We've cut the clutch basket off roughly with the large grinder. Now we'll just get the small grinder and round this off to near the edges of this so that our sprocket can fit on. Okay, now it's cut down small enough. It would be nicer to do on a lathe, but you can do it at home. And we just put this on backwards to make sure that there's a clearance. You can see that it clears all the way around. Now the shaft is pressed into the sprocket. You can see we've also pressed the bearing on and it's now ready to assemble into the transmission. I've now assembled the two sprockets and the chain. This sprocket is on without its bearing, just pushed home so that it'll be easier to remove. It's As you rotate, you can see there will be some slack in the chain and there's a chance of it just touching here when it's on slack. So I'm going to mark down to here and grind this little section off for safety. You can see how far I've clearanced the housing, now we'll put the chain on and see the clearance. Now you can see the clearance with the chain. Now you can see the clearance with the chain, no problem at all. This will be perfect. Okay, now with the assembled shaft you'll see that there's a thrust bearing and there's a needle roller bearing. This needle roller bearing was used to locate the all-wheel drive clutch pack onto the shaft but this is no longer needed as part of the assembly so what we're going to do is remove the needle roller bearing so we need to cut off all this material here down to just the inside here so that we still have support for the thrust bearing but no longer the extra length so we can fit the cover on okay this has been cut down now to less than six millimeters Give it a clean, put the thrust bearing in, and this is now ready for assembly. Here's the shaft. Here's the two sprockets. Perfect alignment. The original Subaru transmission has this all-wheel drive duty solenoid. When power comes through to the solenoid, it lets oil pressure go through to the all-wheel drive clutch. As we're not using it anymore, we have a block-off plate, and instead of connecting the solenoid, which is too deep for our casing, we have a resistor which we provide, which provides the same resistance to the computer as what this does. And it has low temperature solder connectors, so you can simply cut off these connectors, solder them back onto that, plug it all in and you won't get any errors. Okay, so now we've got to install the lock off plate. We put the original aluminium plate back on there and then install the block off plate over the top here. Now I've assembled the chain with its looped end on and the through pin. I've also made sure the thrust bearing is back here on it and it's time to put some gasket glue on the gasket and put the rear cover on. Okay, the rear cover is on now using the original short bolts and long bolts. We've given this as much thinness and clearance as we can to be able to get the trans close to the firewall. We've recessed these bolts in the upper part. It has an integrated mount platform that should bolt to the Volkswagen original Vanagon transmission mount. Put the studs through in there and then we're done.